Today I've got something really cool to show you. This is Sonic the Hedgehog running on a Commodore 64. A home computer from 1982 that has no business running a game like this. In June of 1991, Sega released Sonic the Hedgehog for the Genesis in North America. Four months later, Sega also released Sonic for their 8-bit console, the Sega Master System. A lot of people forget about the Master System. Sonic was a great game to show off just what the system was capable of. The colors, the fast action, the amazing pixel art. It was a great translation of Sonic to 8-bit hardware. This game took Sonic through six zones, and these levels aren't straight copies of the Genesis version. They've each got their own identity, influenced by the original game. The levels in 8-bit Sonic differ as they tend to lean more on exploration than the 16-bit original. Chaos Emeralds are a good example of this, where they're hidden throughout the levels instead of being found in the bonus stages. Sega really did create a fantastic 8-bit version of Sonic, and I love going back and playing this one every few years or so. So when I heard there was a Commodore 64 port released, I was particularly curious to see how it would hold up to Sega's amazing original. This C64 version was released at the very end of 2021. It was programmed by Andreas Varga, aka Mr. Sid. And if you don't know about Mr. Sid, let's just say he's got a very impressive resume in the games industry. And in the past, has released some incredible Commodore 64 ports. Games like Cannibalt, Donkey Kong Jr., and even Prince of Persia. The C64 version is based off the Master System code, with a large chunk of the game being hand-translated from Z80 instructions to the Commodore's native 6502 architecture. This is a real deal, and it absolutely blows my mind to see that this is where we're at with the Commodore 64. When we're talking graphics, the Master System is miles ahead of the Commodore 64. The original graphics really popped on the Master System, looking better than even what the NES could do. But here on the Commodore 64, they look a bit muted, but otherwise they're spot on. It's definitely lower resolution, but it has retained the little details from the original game. All of the scenery artwork, enemies, and even the underwater sections look good. I was surprised that even the graphically intense areas like in Sky Base Zone have translated well to the C64. The graphics were brought over by Oliver Lindau, aka Vito, a very skilled pixel artist who, back in the 90s, was a professional game artist, but more recently has done graphics for various C64 demos, and even games too, like the more recent Donkey Kong Arcade. The 8-bit Sonic music on the Master System was rearranged and inspired by the original Genesis and Mega Drive version, and I thought it mixed well with the 8-bit visuals on the Master System. But here on the Commodore 64, this is awesome! This music was brought over to the legendary SID chip by Mikkel Hastrup, aka Encore, who's yet another very skilled individual who did the music for the retail C64 game Soulless, and the C64 conversion of Super Hexagon called Micro Hexagon. He's also worked with Mr. Sid in the past on his other C64 remakes, like Cannibalt and Donkey Kong Jr. This game's absolutely amazing, but before you run off to go grab your Commodore out the closet, I got some bad news for you. It will not run on just a stock C64. It actually requires an upgrade device called an REU, or RAM Expansion Unit. The REU has DMA capabilities, which allow the screen to be updated faster than you could do on a stock C64. And it wouldn't be possible to have such a speedy game on the C64 without it. It's like giving your Commodore steroids. What's even worse about it is that the REU upgrade is a very rare and expensive device, and even required a special power supply. Now you could easily expand the RAM in an emulator, which is how I recommend you play it, or something like the C64 Mini. But if you want to play this on real hardware, it requires you to bring the RAM up to 256K as a minimum. But it's suggested to have 512K or more, as that will allow you to load the entire game into RAM and not have to worry about any loading while you're playing. I mean, it is kind of a bummer that you need all this stuff just to play the game. And some might not even consider this a real Commodore 64 game because of it. But this is a graphically intense game, so it's not going to be as compatible as, say, the C64 port of Super Mario, where you can run that one on just a stock C64 with a little slowdown. 
Personally, I think it's cool to see bigger games like this on the C64, and it's not the first game to require an REU. I wouldn't be too surprised if eventually we get to a point where modern REUs are common, and games will get bigger and better, especially with guys like Mr. Sid out there porting legendary game franchises. Another interesting point of this port is that it will take advantage of upgrades, such as playing on the Commodore 128 and C64 mode, or even hardware upgrades like the Super CPU, which helped the game keep a smooth 60 frames per second on NTSC Commodores. Where that was actually one of the worst parts about the original Master System version, it had terrible slowdown, and at times it could really chug. In my experience, running Sonic on the C128 ran even better than the original Master System version. And this is how I've been showing you the gameplay in this video. This is set up here to be the most optimal performance and best visuals in my opinion. And here's exactly how to set this up for yourself. So first you need to download the Vice Commodore emulator and your Sonic disk images. If you can find a copy in the D81 disk image format, it's easier to manage because it combines both disk images into one file. So after you extract your emulator, you're going to navigate to the binary folder called bin. If you scroll down, you'll find all these different Commodore computer configuration executables. The one we're going to use for Sonic is called x128.exe for the Commodore 128. Then we go up to Preferences and down to Settings. Then go down to Machine and Model. If you're from the US, you'll want to change your model of Commodore to C128 NTSC. It defaults to PAL, which they use in Europe. But the games would run slower than what we're used to here in the US, so you'll probably want to change this. Next, go down and check the box under Miscellaneous to always switch to C64 mode on reset. Sonic is a C64 game, so you gotta run it in C64 mode for it to work. And this puts the computer into C64 mode every time it's reset. From there, you want to go over to the Cartridges section and down to RAM Expansion Module and click Enable RAM Expansion Module Cartridge. And make sure the RAM size is set to 512K. Like I mentioned earlier, this will give you the option to load the entire game into memory so you won't have to load anything later. Then you're all ready to go. You can drop your disk image on the window to boot up the game. The C128 will be in C64 mode. It should detect the C128 and give you the option to enable CPU acceleration. You can even hit Alt W to enter warp mode and speed past the loading screens. There is one last change that I did to my game that's completely optional. In my opinion, the game by default looks a little squished. So if you want it like I have it here, you can go back into the settings and go to Display and down to Vic 2. Then go down to Scaling and Full Screen and uncheck the Keep Aspect Ratio box. This will cause it to stretch out the image a bit more. The title screen does look a little wide, but the actual game itself looks a lot closer to Master System Sonic. I also went ahead and turned off the CRT video filter. It's on by default, but in my opinion it makes the image a bit too washed out for my liking. So if you're fresh to 8-bit Sonic and have never played the game before, I would highly recommend that your first 8-bit Sonic experience should be the Master System version. The graphics are so amazing, the game handles great, and it is so much fun. It's also not an overly difficult game. It's very approachable. Overall, it's a little on the easier side, where it's not so easy that it's boring, but you shouldn't have too much trouble playing through it and beating the game. It's about an hour long. I really recommend you check it out if you're looking for a Sonic game that's a little different than what we're used to seeing. Seems Sega keeps feeding us the 16-bit Sonic games over and over again, where this 8-bit version is a nice change of pace. It is kind of weird seeing Sonic in 8-bit. You know, especially after seeing him in 16-bit so often, it can be a bit jarring at first. But I promise you, it really does grow on you once you spend some time with it. But yeah, play the Master System version first, then play the C64 port. Quite honestly, the C64 port looks official. I've heard rumors that Sega had cancelled a planned port to the Amiga and C64, so maybe in some alternate universe, this is what we would have gotten for the official release. It's absolutely insane to me that the C64 can keep up with the Master System like this. The speed is unreal, and the controls are perfect with the one-button joysticks. I also really like the Sonic tunes on the SID chip here. They sound great. This is such an impressive port. I love it. If you're wondering about the legality of this game, Sega takes a much different approach to fan games than, say, Nintendo. Where Sega's own Sonic Community Manager has said that Sega usually has no issues with Sonic fan works, as long as no profit is involved. This is a free game, so yeah, there's absolutely no worries about playing this one. It's all in the clear. 
So yeah, I highly recommend you check this game out. I think it's fantastic. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it so I know you're watching. It really helps out my little channel if you do that. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I make videos about odd and obscure retro gaming stuff just like this one. I hope you liked it. Thanks for your time today, guys. Goodbye.